Hi, I'm Tom Miggert from Tom Miggert Photography. Last week we saw one of the two features that we find in most modern DSLRs that are meant to address the noise in your photograph. The high ISO speed noise reduction. Well, if you haven't watched that episode, I invite you to click on the link right now. So today, as you can see here on your screen, we're going to talk about the second feature that is called the long exposure noise reduction. This is actually a screenshot of my Canon 5D Mark III. So long exposure. What we consider being a long exposure is an exposure of at least one second. And the noise that we're going to cover today has absolutely nothing to do with the noise that we've talked about in the past. In fact, even the way of treating it is entirely different. So when we take a long exposure, we may encounter a phenomenon also known as thermal noise. And in order to explain what thermal noise is, I need to remind ourselves uh, what uh, or how your camera actually works. Um, so you have the, the, the sensor in your camera. It's basically a grid made of light sensors. And when the light hits uh, the light sensors, it produces photoelectrons. So you have current going through uh, your sensor to capture all this. And the longer your exposure, well, with the current, your um, sensor will heat up and heat up even more as your exposure um, lasts. And so what happens is the heat is actually not very good when it comes to current and um, some of the electrons will be freed up and will collide with other electrons and will basically pollute the information. And that's how you end up getting what we call thermal noise, but uh, when you look at your image, you end up seeing hot pixels. And this is exactly how we look like. Uh, you can get a very vivid uh, red pixel. It can be white, uh, it can be green, um, it can be blue as well. Uh, do not be confused with dead or stuck pixels. And I, I hear that a lot of people just using them alternatively and meaning the same thing, but they actually different. A dead pixel is a pixel that is, well, dead, but literally it's the light sensor that uh, is damaged and there's no current going through it and therefore there's no information being captured. So when you look at your photograph with a dead pixel, you end up seeing kind of a black dark spot uh, or pixel. Uh, so that is a dead pixel and you can find it uh, not only on camera sensors, but you can find it on um, your computer display, for example. And when it's damaged, it's damaged. There's nothing you can do about it. Then you have stuck pixel, and that's totally different. Uh, this is a pixel that is going to appear pretty vividly uh, red, and it's usually one, or you may have several, but they're usually not next to each other. And that doesn't mean that it's damaged forever. So it's just that the information somehow, there is current going through it, but the information is somehow stuck and, and not being uh, read properly. And so that comes and goes, and uh, I must admit, as your camera gets older and used, uh, you're going to be more prone to get this type of uh, stuck pixels. You can find that on um, your computer screen as well, but it may just disappear the same way as it appeared. And in a worse scenario, you can always send it to uh, the manufacturer service and it can actually uh, repair that for you. Uh, so that's for uh, dead and, and, hot, and stuck pixels and hot pixels, as I said, um, that's uh, specific to thermal noise. So you, you wouldn't see this on your uh, computer display, for example. One thing to keep in mind is, uh, because we're talking about heat over here, the ambience um, temperature has a role to play. So if you were to take a shot, for example, in Scotland, and uh, with the same camera and the same exposure settings, you were taking another shot in the south of France in the middle of the summer, for example, well, the picture in taken in the south of France would be more prone to thermal noise than the one you shot in um, uh, Scotland. Also, using a high ISO value will increase the heat of your sensor and therefore um, accentuate the risk of uh, thermal noise. The camera sensor size as well would actually play a role. Uh, obviously, uh, the full frame sensor will encounter less uh, noise as regular noise, but also less uh, thermal noise. And you can take a rule of thumb where uh, you would have two cameras with the same uh, number of uh, megapixels, uh, but one is a crop sensor camera and the other one would be a full frame. On the crop sensor camera, you have the same number as uh, of megapixels as the full frame, but they're all closer to each other. And so therefore the, the risk of 
having electrons polluting the others uh, is, is greater. And also the sensor tend to heat uh, a little bit more because it's, uh, or quicker, because it's, um, it's a smaller surface. So how do we treat this? Well, if you select in the camera, you select the long exposure noise reduction, you have three options, disabled, which is self-explicit, auto and enabled. Uh, enable will activate itself as long as your exposure is of one second. Well, at least this is on Canon most cameras. Might be different with yours though. So what does it do exactly when you, en when you enable it? Well, it does what we call dark frame subtraction. And so you may, if you've tried this feature, you may have noticed that when you take an exposure, let's say of five second, you can hear at the end of the five second, the shot is finished and you can hear the, uh, the mirror flipping, but the camera is still not letting you take another shot. In fact, you will see it's written busy on it. And uh, it's gonna take a while before it actually lets you able to, 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 to do another shot. The reason being is that the camera, as soon as it finishes the first uh, picture, it will take another one uh, of the same exposure time, but without exposing the sensor to the light. And because the conditions are the same, because the exposure is the same, then uh, that picture, which is going to be black, obviously, will have um, hot pixels in it. And so what it does afterwards is subtract uh, the um, uh, that dark frame of the um, from the the picture, the first one that you took, and that's how we actually deals and remove the hot pixels. And the enable uh, feature, it's, a, it's meant to be a smart one. So uh, same, it triggers after the ex once the exposure is actually at least one second, and um, it's meant to detect whether your exposure will actually need. Uh, the noise reduction to be applied or not. So I don't have the details obviously around the algorithm behind it, but it's meant to be smarter. So should we actually use that feature, uh, and I'm not talking about the auto, but using the long exposure noise reduction? Well, we've got to do a test. We need to see exactly what the effect is on the uh, on the picture. So to do that, I've taken two shots and um, to show you the rest, I need to go to uh, Canon DPP. So I've taken two shots and obviously they're both gonna have the same exposure. And as you can imagine, the first shot will have the uh, noise reduction uh, disabled and then the second shot, I will enable it. So in terms of the exposure, I went with 30 seconds, the aperture value, we don't really care. And the ISO, I went with 100. I know I told you that the higher ISO, the, the more chances you get to, um, to encounter the thermal noise, but I didn't wanna mix regular noise and um, thermal noise. Also, I figured that if you were to take a long exposure, you're most likely going to use a uh, smaller ISO value. So I use my Canon 60D because it's a crop factor, uh, crop sensor camera. And of course, I would get more um, uh, th uh, hot pixels that I would get if I was trying to do the test with a 5D Mark III. So we're going to use a uh, smaller ISO value. So I use my Canon 60D because it's a crop factor, uh, crop sensor camera, and of course I would get more um, uh, th uh, hot pixels that I would get if I was trying to do the take a long exposure. You most likely get that if you were to take all noise. Also, I think so. We're going to use a uh, smaller ISO value. So. I use my Canon 60D, but we don't see anything. So let, let, let's try to increase um, the exposure as well. And there is nothing. So clearly it treated um, the hot pixels that we saw in the first one. I'm selecting that again. You can see here the pretty uh, apparent. And in the second one, well, it's no longer there. So that seems to be a great feature. But what happened if we actually open the photos in uh, Lightroom, for example? So so here we're in Lightroom, and this is the first frame. Uh, I don't see any hot pixels, so let's let's increase the exposure. So we we find one. The re by the way, the reason why it's red around is because in Lightroom you can actually push it, the exposure uh, by five stop, whereas in DPP you can do it by two, up to two. So anyway, we can see one hot pixel here in Lightroom, but it's quite interesting because it's the same image open in. DPP where we had, well, there's about 10 here. So why? Well, the reason is because Camera Raw, which is the engine behind Lightroom and Photoshop, actually treats uh, thermal noise, hot pixels, when it interpret the, the raw file. So that's why you have less. 
So we can still have a look at um, the frame that was actually uh, treated. So here, let's increase the um, exposure, and I don't see any hot pixel. So it seems to be doing the trick as well. Interestingly, you remember when we talked about the high ISO speed noise reduction tool of the camera, we noticed that, that in whatever was done in the camera was only seen in DPP, but was not seen in third-party software like, uh, like Lightroom, DxO, and Photoshop. Um, but here, well, we had one hot pixel in the, the, the frame that was not treated, and we can see that the frame that was treated by the camera actually dealt, and we don't have any hot pixel at all. So that treatment actually sustained and remain um, active in the, um, in the third-party software as well. So that's pretty good. I did discover something though. If we um, actually bring here, and let's say we want to remove this red, so let's, let's put the black down, and okay, so now we have only one. Now let's go and um, zoom two to one. So we can see our pixel here, and we can see a little bit of color red, but really not much. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, really nothing. Whereas now, if I actually go in that second picture that was uh, treated, and same, I'm just going to apply the black, look at all the red pixels that you see here. So I find that pretty interesting. I don't have any conclusion to draw from this, other than the camera, when the camera treats the picture uh, and the hot pixels, uh, it clearly does something and it's not fully clean. Although, bear in mind, this is a 200%, right? So who cares about 200%, but still. So it'd be interesting to know if we could achieve a better result by doing a treatment, uh, not in camera, but in software. We're not going to do this today. I'm going to do it in the next episode. I'm going to use this dark frame subtraction, but I'm going to do it in Photoshop. And we'll see how it compares to, uh, to this. So this is... Um, this is all the experience. So what, what conclusion we can draw? How can we answer this initial question, which was, should we use the long um, exposure noise reduction tool of our cameras? Well, like many questions in photography, the answer is it depends. It depends on the scenario that you um, you exposed to, uh, no point intended. So because this feature uh, relies on doing this dark frame subtraction and it basically multiply the exposure time by two. So you have the first exposure and then you have exactly the same exposure time for the dark frame. Uh, so it might not be actually uh, great to have this happening when you do the following scenarios. The first one, let's imagine star trail photography. There's two ways of doing star trails and I'll, I'll do a video about it, but in other scenarios, it's not going to work if you use the um, long exposure noise reduction feature. Why? Because if you actually do stacks, so meaning that you're going to take several exposures, well, if in between exposures your camera needs to treat the noise, then at the end you're going to end up having blanks in your trail, so that's not going to work. Uh, then if you do a single exposure, like one hour or three hours, like I've done in the past, well, what's going to happen is that once you take, the, let's say, a one hour shot, then it finishes and then your camera is not going to be responding for another hour. And so that's not great either. Plus, imagine uh, it's going to eat your battery up. So that's not good either. So start rate wouldn't work. Then time lapse would not work. If you actually use an intervalometer, uh, it might, it's not going to work with the um, long exposure noise reduction process because uh, when the interval is up, then maybe your camera hasn't finished processing the, uh, the dark frame and, and so it's, gonna, it's not going to work. So that's going to fail. Uh, then let's imagine you are taking um, pictures of something that is constantly moving, evolving, and you want to capture this, although you're doing a long exposure, but you still want to capture it, such as maybe a, a sunset or sunrise, and you want to capture these golden hours that we know we don't have much time, but we want to capture all the variants of, uh, of light and maybe the clouds. And so if you enable it, then you, you're going to want to take another shot, but you can't do it because the camera is processing, so you're stuck. So that's not going to work. Uh, another uh, scenario that I could think of, if sometimes, if you actually do uh, stack photography and, and composite in, in, in Photoshop, sometimes you may want to capture, I don't know, like um, 
car trails, you know, with the, with, with the headlights and or the rear lights. And you may want to do several exposures just to increase the, the phenomenon of, of the trails. And so that part is, is is rather bright in your image. So if you're going to capture several exposure, long exposure, but you only care about the bright parts, the bright zones in your picture, then it doesn't really matter to use that tool because the hot pixels are not going to be seen in the bright zone of your pictures. So it wouldn't make any sense to actually use it. So do I actually use this feature? Well, I must admit, I do not use it. I am lucky enough to have a 5D Mark III that just doesn't, at least for now, doesn't uh, give me any um, hot pixels. And even if it did, I must admit, I'm using Lightroom. So Lightroom seems to be clearing them out. Um, so no, I do not use it. If I wanted to... Um, do a very very long exposure i may actually do it uh but you know me i'm not a big fan of processing your image inside a camera i'd like to think that third-party softwares are much better at doing it so i would use the another method of doing the dark frame subtraction using uh photoshop and this is exactly what i'm going to cover in the next episode so um i hope you found that informative let me know in the comments uh give me a thumb play that that's always uh um pleasing to get. And until then, this is Tommy Gutt saying, if you like it, well, capture it. Ciao.